Hey, thanks for watching CNN 10. Our daily 10 minute shows are on pause for the summer, but we will be posting clips like this Monday through Friday until our regular programming resumes in August. So please enjoy, and to get notified of our content, please like and subscribe to this channel and keep up with us at CNN10.com. There isn't a problem with trees exactly at all. It's just that if trees were to grow 50% faster, then they would remove carbon 50% faster as well. So our goal is to improve the growth rate of trees. They've been called hacked trees, super trees, even Franken trees. But Living Carbon founders Patrick Meller and Matty Hall want people to know that the bioengineered trees they've created could be one of the more natural solutions to combat climate change. There's, there's a tension between the land we need for food production and the ability to do large-scale carbon removal with nature-based solutions. So our idea behind engineering trees was actually could we introduce a product that would allow us to restore that land faster and be able to capture carbon on land that wasn't our top quality food production land. You need biotechnology to do that. Living Carbon found that by genetically enhancing a trait responsible for photosynthesis, it could optimize trees for growth. So far, the company has mainly worked with poplar trees and a variety of pine. They grow faster because they're able to uptake carbon dioxide more efficiently from the atmosphere to transform a greater proportion of that carbon dioxide into their own tissues, be that wood or leaves or all of the other parts of a plant. In some research that we've recently shared, we've demonstrated a 39 to 53% increase in biomass accumulation, which results in about 27% more carbon being captured. While 27% may not sound earth shattering, on a large enough scale, it has the potential for a massive effect. You may have heard of the Trillion Trees Initiative and other kinds of projects like this, the idea of uh, offsetting industrial emissions through planting trees. It would be very helpful if the requirement for that was five to 700 billion trees rather than a trillion trees. And growing trees, as opposed to other fast growing plants like kelp, offers other advantages. The driving force for it for me was that, well, we have to build stuff out of the wood. We have to make stuff out of what these trees draw out. And that carbon that was removed from the atmosphere by the trees remains in the wood products that are made from them. That's the long-term view. The biggest problem with any carbon removal company right now is scale. We picked trees because trees are already planted at scale. We plant about 1.6 billion trees per year in the U.S. alone. So we sell our seedlings either at zero cost or at pretty much no margin. And then we retain the rights to the carbon credits and sell those to generate revenue from the company. We also provide landowners with a revenue share from those carbon credits. The carbon market is in a sense embryonic at this point. What exists now will certainly increase just because the magnitude of the problem will progressively become clearer. We are in that sense dependent on a certain degree of rationality from the human species. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to our newsletter at CNN10.com and we'll see you in August for daily episodes of CNN10. I'm Carl Azus.